kickstand that they headed out for the four lane and they thought it was lots of fun with Jake on his hog with the two to the dog with the automatic 45 gun. Jake, he thought it was the best there was, was down the interstate he saw till the day he tangled with the county sheriff who they all call 104. Night Dreams Talk Radio Network brings you the World Paranormal News with James Creechbaum. Now, the latest news. I'm James Creechbaum with the Paranormal and World Changes News. Ohio Town sees mystery flashes and vibrations. Recently released footage shows the moment the skies over Bethel, Ohio suddenly lit up in multiple colors. According to reports, the phenomena, which took the form of a series of bright multicolored flashes, occurred without warning just before 7 p.m. on January 12th. One witness says the sky was flashing pink and purple, super bright. Thought it might be lightning, but it's fairly cold, 40 degrees, and there was no thunder. It was crazy, super bright. Another witness even reported vibrations and strange humming sound. And when the power went out, there was the light show, she said. The floor was vibrating and there was a humming noise. It was really odd. So far, however, no explanation for the phenomena has been found. Elon Musk claims one million humans could live on Mars in 50 years. Elon Musk tweeted out new details of SpaceX's plans to make the human race multiplanetary. Elon Musk tweeted, the details about SpaceX's much-anticipated plan for the company's colonization of Mars, claiming it will become a reality in mid-century. UFO sightings in North America jumped to nearly 6,000 in 2019. There was a rise in the number of North Americans who looked up into the sky in 2019 and found something that didn't look like a bird or a plane. A national UFO reporting center which tracks calls and messages from people around the U.S. and Canada about strange sightings in the sky reported that it received 5,971 sightings in 2019. That's a jump of 3,395 from the previous year. NASA wants to grow moon wants to grow a moon base out of mushrooms. Yes, NASA scientists are exploring a peculiar strategy for building a moon base and other off-world structures growing them on site out of living mushrooms. Scientists believe a second planet may be orbiting Proxima Centauri. Scientists believe they have found evidence of a second planet orbiting Proxima Centauri, the closest star to our solar system, now, they found a low-mass candidate planet around half the size of Neptune orbiting the star. It's located in a planetary system called Alpha Centauri. Next news break, top of the hour. Good evening, or morning, depending on your time zone. From the Pacific to the Atlantic to you worldwide. Get yourself a cup of java and find a comfy, easy chair. And get ready for Gary and his guest on Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. And now, here's Gary. And here I am. Let's get our guests on the phone. So we'll do that next here on Night Dreams. And we're going to find out, <clears throat> excuse me, what really dark secret had happened with this guy and his family. Yeah, it sounds intriguing. Gotta know. It does. Well, I think we already got him on the show. And, yeah. uh, well, uh, do we have Kevin Miller here? Yeah, this is Kevin. 
Well, hi, Kevin. How you doing? You got Gary on Night Dream Stock Radio. I'll tell you what, you were so fast answering that phone, I wasn't even prepared. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I just sat down here. I got my water and I and I got my phone plugged in and, and boom, you just you picked you, you called me, so I was quick to the draw. How are you doing tonight? I am doing good. And you're what, out in California? Yeah, yeah. We are currently out in the Burbank area, California. We're uh, originally from uh, Arizona. I was actually born in Ohio, but uh, grew up in Arizona. So we've been here about six years in Southern Cal. Ah, my daughter lives in Hemet, California. And, you know, oh, good. I, yeah, the last mm-hmm. time I went and seen her, I got on my Harley. We went to uh, uh, we, Reno, mm-hmm. and then I went to Prump to see my friend who's no longer alive, Art, and then we went yeah. to Las Vegas. I lost a whole bunch of money. Went to him at California. The weather <laughs> was beautiful. We did it in the yeah. end of uh, May. And they predicted mm-hmm. no rain. And then after I spent a couple of days busy, my daughter, they mm-hmm. had the biggest rainstorm in Southern California. <laughs> then years, I had yeah. no gear. And I'll tell you what, riding a Harley from all mm-hmm. the way from, it didn't hit till I hit Sacramento. But all the way yeah. back, to, all the way to Tacoma, Washington, to Gig Harbor, pouring down rain oh, nonstop, God. I tell you. Oh, my gosh, man. That's crazy. Yeah. It, well, it, you, you Harley riders are tough guys, so I'm sure you could handle it. Yeah, I don't know that. When we got up to the mountains, <laughs> the, the passes, they get into Granite's yeah. Pass, it was snowing. I've yeah. never rode a motorcycle in my life in oh, the snow. God. I had to. Yeah. Talk about that had to be a little harrowing. Yeah. Yeah. About a thousand pounds worth of harrowing. I, I tell you, <laughs> why don't you tell the, the listeners, Kevin, a little bit about sure. yourself? Oh, sure. Yeah, Gary. Um, and thank you for having me on your show. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I am a, an Air Force vet. I, um, I just recently wrote a book, my first book, a debut book, uh, a true story actually about my grandfather, um, a story I just kind of had to tell just because, uh, you know, he, he was just an amazing man. And, and here's, where the, here's where the story begins is, is I kind of woke up one day and learned my name is really not Kevin D. Miller, but my real last name was actually a, a very Polish name, Puchalski. And... Uh, it was a, a kind of a stunner for us to find out. My my dad, who's like going to be 87 years old in March this year, didn't didn't have any idea. My grandfather took all this information to the grave with him, so it kind of intrigued me to try to figure out why. You know, why did he change our name in 1920? You know, what was he hiding? What was, you know, what was he protecting us from, basically, and. The the way we found out about this is uh, my uncle, I had an uncle of mine, my dad's younger brother, who, who had got a hold of some old newspaper articles from 1920. He had some cousins that were doing some genealogy uh, studies, and they came across this, and, and they gave it to him and said, you might want to read these because uh, your last name really isn't Miller. And it chronicled uh, murder, a family murder mystery uh, scandal in 1920 um, in rural Ohio where my great-grandfather, George Buhalski, was murdered in his sleep, in his bed in his farmhouse. He was a rich farmer in, in Ohio, and my great-grandmother was uh, bound and gagged, and she sent my grandfather, who was 12 years old at the time, to grab the sheriff. And as I'm reading these newspaper articles from the Warren Tribune in 1920, they kind of span about a week and a half, two weeks, and the, and the story starts taking some bizarre twists and turns and um everything wasn't quite as as it seemed and uh as the tragedy goes along you know my grandfather ends up in an orphanage with his four siblings kind of alone and on their own um and stuck in an orphanage you know his father's murdered his, his mother's no longer there in the picture and 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 it just kind of you know, 12, 13 years old, kind of uh, turned his world upside down. So um, he decides that he is going to run away from this orphanage because the orphanage was not a good place. It was not a nice place in 1920. And he hops a train and actually uh, ends up in Chicago 
and gets a job in a steel mill as a bar catcher. He lies about his age. And, and, he, and a, a couple takes him in, a Polish couple takes him in, kind of gets him into some bootlegging. And, and he saves enough money to then come back, you know, six or eight months later and steal his siblings out of that orphanage and then, you know, takes care of them. And, and then the last part of the story is kind of his, you know, his love story when he meets my grandmother. That's kind of the gist of the book. So, um, you know, so I, I've, I'm a new author and, and I have the book. I had released this book back in August um, after doing about three years of research of just uncovering uh, all these, you know, secrets and all these, you know, amazing things that just kind of turned up. But why would they have, Kevin, why would they change your name over that? Well, I, I think the reason my grandfather changed our name was to um, to just protect his family, protect his mom, protect the family, protect all his descendants, his children and grandchildren from this family scandal. You know, because we're talking 1920, you know, and it was you know, it was just a horrible scandal. It's a horrible story, but it, it you know tragedy. But um, so he was. I truly believe that he was just trying to protect us and protect our family. Change our name to a common name like Miller. You know, it's a very common name to just kind of get away from and obscure that past, so that it uh, you know just doesn't get passed along. And he did a good job of it because uh, he and his siblings swore a vow of secrecy, and they took it to their graves and didn't talk about it. You know, there's clues here and there, you know, that can finally come together and, and talking to relatives and, and reading, you know, uh, letters and doing research. But um, I, I truly believe he was trying to protect his family is the reason he changed the name. Well, do you, did they ever figure out what the murder uh, was about? What caused it? What was that about? Well, yeah, um, it, it is in the book. Um, be a kind of a spoiler. I mean, I guess I could tell you if you well, really wanted he, to. Open. He, he, well, here's the thing. I yeah. mean, you know, yeah. I have you booked for an hour and a half, and you know, oh, sure. We usually when I, you know, when well, like I had a guy on Thursday uh, that talked about mm-hmm. his book about, uh, yeah, you know, uh, Jack the Ripper, and we went oh, into nice. we went mm-hmm. into the all the whole you know everything about Jack the Ripper. What sure. caused it? I mean, yeah. I, we're not asking you to give the spoiler away. What we want to do is find out. Oh, I mean, if yeah. we sit there and just say, hey, well, yeah, the family got murdered in bed. OK, people are yeah. going to go, oh, OK, well, hey, gotcha. a lot of people no, get I, murdered I, I in bed. You. Gotcha. I, I can totally I can totally give you that because here here's here's the why. Um, let me let me go back and, and I'll paint the picture for you. My great grandfather was a Polish immigrant. My my great-grandparents were Polish immigrants, and he was a very rich farmer. He had uh, a farm in uh, Southington, Ohio. It's outside of Warren. It was about 98 and a half acres, and he owned other properties. But he's a good old boy of Southington, and he he drank a lot. He, He was a whiskey drinker, and he was extremely abusive, physically abusive. He he would come home and he would just beat the tar out of my great grandmother. Um, so much so that she actually lost, uh, six pregnancies to his beatings. And he, you know, he would just drink and and get real mean. And then he started, um, beating my great aunt, his daughter, who was 15 at the time. And he was beating her, you know, and, and just, and just be, he was just extremely abusive, just a, a real cruel, very cruel person. So, um, you know, and, and, and if you think about it, I mean, you can kind of see where this is going. Um, I think my grand, great-grandmother had, had had enough. You know, it was it's kind of one of those things. It's like you can do this to me, but, you know, now that when you're doing it to my child, you know, um, it just kind of goes across the line and stuff. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's kind of where it led, you know. I mean, she, um, she'd had enough, and she had actually – conspired with her brother-in-law to, um, you know, to, to, to take care of him, to have him murdered and, uh, and tried to cover it up. You know, she, she kind of, you know, blamed, uh, three men, you know, t- that broke into their farmhouse, stole $600 and murdered him and stuff. That's kind of the story she told to the law. And as it, as it got investigated over the, you know, the, the weeks and stuff, her story kind of broke down and, and they kind of figured it out and pieced it together. And then they had some confessions as to where it went. 
so um so that's kind of where it was left and then of course my grandfather you know he's lost his father and now he's lost his mother and he him and his siblings are now you know just kind of all by themselves in a in a pretty bad you know uh, situation in an orphanage in 1920 interesting but it's 